Hey, I'm Colin Lacey, and today we're going to take a deeper look at NATs, specifically how we can cluster our NAT servers, as well as use the services framework to create more production ready services that are going to interact with our NATs cluster, right? In my last video, we looked at some high level concepts of how NATs works. Well, today, deeper dive, going to look at some of the more production ready concerns like high availability, low latency, and making sure that we can interact with our cluster to know what's deployed. So what does my NATS deployment look like? Well, today I'm running in a Kubernetes cluster, specifically in AWS in US East 1. I've got three NAT servers deployed and they are all backed by Jetstream, right? They all have durability to store data as it streams through. Now, I'm not really gonna showcase Jetstream today, but I am gonna use the same deployment for future videos. So when we talk about things like streaming and object store, we're gonna use this exact same setup to do so. Right. But today we're talking about request reply and that doesn't really use Jetstream under the hood. So because we're running in Kubernetes, these are all wired together on the network using a Kubernetes service. Now, I didn't have to do a lot to get this all deployed. I was able to leverage this Helm chart that was put together by the NATS maintainers. And all I had to do was create this values.yaml file, which wasn't all that hard. I was able to just follow the documentation in this Helm chart repo that explains all of the different configuration options that you have. And they all point back to the NATS documentation, right? So you're just following standard configuration options that you would no matter where you deploy your NATS servers. So that was pretty easy. So now that I have this stood up, right, it's all running in my Kubernetes cluster. As I deploy services, they're going to interact with this Kubernetes service that fronts my NAT servers. So that's how they'll be sending requests and how they'll be sending replies. They all interact through this service exposed by the Helm chart that fronts my NAT's servers. Cool. I've got, like I said, a Kubernetes cluster running in US East 1, and it's got four services, an adder, a multiplier, a subtractor, and a divider. Now those are all created using the NAT's services framework. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Come back into my VS code, I come over here. I decided to build these services in Python. There are lots of other languages that you can build your services in. In fact, there's plenty of examples. If we go to Nets by example, and we look at the services framework, there's a lot of languages where you can see how you can create a service in the services framework using whatever language you like, right? But I chose Python today. So let's go back into VS Code. And we can see I've got a class, adder service. It's got one method, operate. It's going to take a message a NATS AIO message, and it's going to do one thing. It's going to take a first number and it's going to add it against a second number. That makes sense for an adder service. I've got, for example, a divider service, and that is gonna do the same thing. It's gonna take a first number, it's gonna divide it by a second number. And you can probably see what the trend is here, right? With a multiplier and subtractor, you would expect the same thing. But scrolling down, Looking deeper at the code here, I'm using the NATS micro module and I'm going to add a service. I'm going to declare the service name. So add a service and the region it's running in. And I'm also going to provide a description. And once I've added my service, I can then add an endpoint to that service, right? And this is where I'll declare my handler, my adder.operate. So this is where I'm saying on this math numbers add subject right so that's the full subject i'm going to have a handler adder.operate and that's going to call this method right here and it's going to add my numbers and it's going to respond with the sum cool if we look at the divider same thing we have math dot numbers dot divide it's going to call the divider dot operate method and that is going to divide first number by second number multiplier subtractor same thing so that's what i've got running in my environment and if we come into my terminal and i'm going to paste in this command here and it's going to look at the stats for all of these four services so i'll paste it in cool and we'll get all the stats all right you can see divider service east, multiplier service east, subtractor service east, and adder service east. These were all just deployed. They haven't fielded any requests yet. Let's solve that problem. If we come back into VS Code, I've got another service, 
the requester. Now I'm going to run this as a job, as a Kubernetes job, right? So consider it running it as a script. It's going to connect to the NAT server. It's got a username and password. And what this is going to do, it's going to loop by creating a dict that's got two numbers, a first and second number. Similar to what we saw, it's going to pass a first and second number to each of these four subjects. Numbers add, numbers subtract, numbers multiply, and numbers divide. And it's going to loop 10 times, passing each pair of numbers to each service by making requests against these subjects. Cool. It's going to log out what the answer is, and then it's going to quit. That's simple enough, and it's going to create traffic that, so we can see how our services behave. So come back into terminal, clear this out, and I will cube cuddle, apply my requester. And then real quick, I want to cube cuddle logs requester follow. And we'll see, wow, that was fast. So it already ran, it already received all the responses. Okay, so you could see things like math numbers add. We add 79 and 87, we got 166. Subtract 79 and 87, negative eight. Multiply, you could see there's a pattern, right? I don't need to go through them all. But if we come back to this command and we wanna see how all of our services behaved, how all of them handled these requests, we could see each one got 10 requests and we can track how many requests each instance handled. That's pretty cool. So we can print out these stats and observe how they're handling requests over time. And you can see they're pretty evenly distributed, right? No major spikes here. The most we got on any one instance is five, right? But for the most part, evenly distributed. Okay, now I'm gonna do something really weird here. I'm gonna take down my adder service. Why would I do that? Well, we'll find out in a second, but let me delete this job. Cube cut all delete requester. So now I'll cube cuddle, delete, Kate's configs, adder. And now that's gone. So if I cube cuddle, get pods, grep adder, right? That should tell me the state of my pods. Double check. Yep. They're all terminating. Cool. So they can't handle any traffic. Great. So now I'm going to cube cuddle, apply my requester again, Oop, my requester. All right, remember, I took down the adder, so what do we expect to see? We expect to see no listeners on the add subject. Cool, it's running, and I'm going to trail the logs again. All right, here we go. So what happened? Well, wait, 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 wait. My adder is still working. Why is my adder still working? That shouldn't happen, right? I made sure I've got no adders listening. Well, it turns out that this cluster is actually an all powerful super cluster. There's a second Kubernetes cluster where I've got NATs running and they're exchanging traffic as a super cluster. The NATs cluster in US East one is talking to a NATs cluster in Azure running on the other side of the country. And that has an adder service deployed. So we've got all this high availability spanning clusters that cross the country to communicate to each other to make sure that, yeah, I've got an adder service deployed. And if we come back into terminal, we can you know, come back up to the top and I'll do NATS micro stats adder service west. And it's handling requests. It was just handling the requests that I passed in. And if I run this job again, here I'll cube cuddle delete. The adder, the requester. Okay, so I deleted it and now cube cuddle apply the requester again. Cool. It's going to run its 10 requests on each subject. Cool. That's great. And I'll check what are the stats of my adder service west? Did it get 30? It's got 30 requests now. So it's handling all the requests, even though I deployed and I'm running in the US East Kubernetes cluster, it's handling all that traffic on the other side of the country. How cool is that? And it handled it pretty fast, right? There was no noticeable delay from our standpoint. So what does that look like? Let's talk, let's look at that architecture. So again, I've got my NATS cluster on US East one. It's running in EKS. The way that I expose this cluster, there's a lot of ways to do this. I'll talk about those in, in a second, but this service, this Kubernetes service, I deployed it as a load balancer type. 
And in a cloud provider like AWS or Azure, when you use a load balancer type, you can map that to a cloud provider load balancer service. This is an NLB, right? An elastic load balancer of the network load balancer type running in AWS. And on the other side of the country, I've got another Kubernetes cluster that's running in AKS, right? In Azure, that is also a load balancer service mapped to an Azure load balancer. And so that's how the traffic is able to be established between these two Kubernetes clusters, between these two NATS clusters running in Kubernetes. And that in its configuration, come back into VS Code, looks like this. I've got this gateway declaration, right? Now we're looking at the gateway for NATS East and it's advertising the NLB host name on port 7222. Cool. That's going to connect. It's going to declare its gateway endpoint, but it's going to connect to this gateway running on this IP that was generated by the Azure load balancer. Again, port 7222. And the way that we keep it secure is we authenticate using this username and password. Now, there are other ways to authenticate. You can use any of the methods that NATS allows for this demo. I just went with the simplest approach, username and password. But in a production environment, you might want something more like JWT. But for now, this will work. So, OK, we've got this architecture set up. Cool. We've already established that. And we've already established that with a supercluster, we can have traffic span between the two NATS clusters. Now, that kind of brings up the question, well, what would happen if I stood the adder service up in the east again, right? would all of my traffic for a requester in the east stay local or would it span both clusters? Well, let's let's find out. I'm going to come back into my terminal, right? And I'm going to cube cuddle apply the adder service. Okay, so now my adders being deployed, I'll cube cuddle delete the requester job that I had deployed so I can deploy it again. Bring this back to the top. All right, so now I'm going to deploy the requester in the east where I just redeployed my adder. Remember, my adder service in the west was handling all that traffic, right? If we NATS micro check out the adder service in the west, it's handled 30 requests. And if we check out the adder service I just deployed in the east, it's handled none because it just got deployed. That makes a ton of sense. All right, clear this out. And we'll cube cuddle apply the requester to see where all of the traffic lands. Will it stay local or will it span both clusters, creating some unwanted latency? What do you think is going to happen? I think it's pretty obvious what's going to happen here. Check it out. Adder Service East handled all of that traffic. That's because NATS clusters, even though they're super clustered across the country, NATS clusters have geo affinity to make sure your traffic is handled as closely to the requester as possible, as locally as possible. And that cuts down on latency. Again, that's how we handle production level concerns, right? Of low latency while also providing failover in case one of our services goes down or we decide to be weird and just take it down for fun. So with all that in mind, remember, you can set up a sweet cross-country production deployment without a lot of overhead. Remember, all I did, right, I used this Helm chart to get this up and running, just declared the values and I deployed it in both clusters. Boom, I've got a super cluster all connected. So with all that, we're going to wrap up for today, but there's still a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about Jetstream. We're going to talk about leaf nodes. We're going to talk about key value and blob store. A lot of features that we're going to dive deeper into in future videos. So for now, thanks for watching.